Hello, YouTube. This is the Truth Man, also known as Prophet Howard. On BitChute, I'm Truth Man247. Don't go there if you don't want to hear some very harsh things. Um, I don't put everything that I think and believe on YouTube, but. Truth Man 247 on Bitchute. Truth Man on YouTube. But in ministry, and I've been a minister for 21 years. I got my call as a prophet long ago. He showed me that in these last days, he's going to use me as his prophet. Now, disclaimer, the way I say things all the time, is not necessarily how the Most High himself would say them, but the message, the essence of what I'm saying is usually the Most High. And I wanna, I got a lot to cover, so I wanna get into this subject on this one. And this is entitled, Why Your Spiritual Life is Personal Between You and God. Number one reason, we are gonna move real fast. These people, you don't know who saved and who ain't. Everybody has a theory. Everybody has this. Everybody, well, you you a sinner if you do this. Oh, you shouldn't be doing this. All oh, that. There's what all of us think. There's what the Most High meant, and there's what the Most High said. Period. Point blank. So, if what I say is not the truth according to, it don't matter how I say it, is it true or is it not true? The things I say on behalf of the Most High. And when I tell you your spiritual life between you and God is because, number one, you don't know who saved and who ain't. Number one, or number two, if you don't understand truth and know how to research truth and know how to put the Bible, the Book of Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls, all these other books that you should be reading, Line upon line, put the meaning of what they're saying together, the ancient religions, then you're going to just be listening to these preachers, these government religions, who not going to give you the whole entire truth. They're going to give you, it's almost like if I invite you to dinner, and I say, well, you can come to dinner if you want. Dinner is going to be over here at this time. And you get there. And I got all of this food on the table, right? All this food on the table. You choose, you gonna choose what you want. And I come up to you with a little morsel and say, here you go, on a big plate. The smart person gonna say, man, you can go on with that. I want all of that food over there. But people just wanna fit in. They wanna stick together and live together and let's do this together instead of being cutthroat for God instead of God be true and every man a liar and he wanted me to tell you that people are like seeds and he wanted me to tell you that the parable of the sower describes groups of people now let's go to it now we're gonna we're gonna move fast we're gonna move fast we got like I want to finish this in like eight minutes. There's a thing called tares. You all know what wheat, are, wheat is, you know. Wheat is grown by farmers. And a lot of the scriptures that you see in the Bible, he talked about farming, basically, because a lot of things are li in life are about growth. There's life and there's death. Just like in spiritual, there's eternal life and eternal death. There's forever living Happiness, joy, peace, that's forever dying. Regret, sorrow. You choose. That's why I gave you the analogy of the the uh, buffet. And somebody come, a little, little guy comes up to you. The little guy symbolizes the preacher with a little piece of food like, here, here you go. You're going to tell him if you're smart, nah, I need all that over there. I'm hungry. But that's just it. Most people ain't hungry. So going to the scripture, we move them pretty fast. It says in Matthew 13, a New American Standard Bible says, On that day, 
the Messiah had gone out of the house and was sitting by the sea. Large crowds gathered to him, and he got on the boat and sat down, and the whole crowd was standing on the beach. And he told them many parables. Then he said, Behold, the sower went to sow, and as he sowed, remember the seeds are people, groups of people, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up immediately because they had no depth of soil. But after the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. But others fell on good soil. That's what we need you to be. That's what we need you to be. We need you to be good soil. We need you to be a person who's willing to learn. A person that's going to subscribe to this channel so you can get the Bible. You ain't going to just get Bible here. It's all subject, but you get the Bible, I guarantee you, I assure you it's going to be good. And it's going to be the truth. So he said, but others fell on good soil and ye did, yielded a crop. Like the Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits. Some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times as much. The one who has ears, let him hear. Now he explained it in verse 10. He said, And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And the Messiah answered to them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. See, this is what you need. You need to be a disciple so you can learn the, the mysteries. And you won't be going to these preachers who ain't even saved they self. These little old grandmothers trying to tell you how to live. Well, God said this, God said that. Did he? Because there's a lot of categories in life today that he said nothing about. Now it says, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. Whoever has to him shall more shall be given, and he will have in abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. What's that saying? That's saying if you don't have the understanding, if you don't have the connection with the Most High, then the, when somebody try to tell you the word, this is why I said I'm not going out witnessing no more. When I start my full-time church next spring, I'm going to invite people and the people who come, I'm going to teach them. The rest, I ain't going to debate you. I ain't going to whatever. They're going to be like, Oh, well, this says this, this says this. And all them little fake guys in capes with beards and long hair. I'm going to be like, okay, whatever. Move on. I'm going to move on. Because, like he said, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You have to become a disciple. You have to follow him. You have to follow the scripture. You have to follow the most high. His law, his commandments, his prophets. It says... But whoever does not have even what he has shall be taken away. Therefore I speak to him to them in parables, because while seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in their case the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You shall keep on listening, but shall not understand. Ain't that most people in church? Ain't that why he said, Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom, but he who does the will of my father. The will of his father don't have nothing to do with beer. The will of his father don't have nothing to do with Potawatomi bingo. The will of the father is laid out in the word. And he'll show you his will. And then you will be like me, like, No, 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 that's not what that means. So, It says, for their heart, the heart of this people has become dull. And the, they have closed their eyes, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and return, and I will heal them. The good soil won't close their eyes. The good soil uh, will hear with their ears and understand with their heart. The Bible says he saves the contract. See, y'all want to focus on how successful a preacher is. How many people go into church? Are they rich? Are they poor? No, no, no. You know what you are? You're what the seed that fell beside the road. The rocky places. Among thorns. Now watch. 
He's going to explain it right here. Verse 18, listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, you be like, yeah, well, I went to church. And I, I just don't understand what they're saying. You're supposed to, you're supposed to keep trying. away what has been sown in his heart. Let me start over. I'm being interrupted. Okay, it says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one sown with seed beside the road. The one sown with seed on the rocky places, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. This is the people who say the sinner's prayer, but then you see them in the club three months later. It says, Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary, and when affliction and persecution occurs because of the word, immediately falls away. How many people do you see that seem saved? As soon as they go through some trouble, they write back how they was. It says, and the one sown with seed among thorns, this is the one who hears the word and the anxiety of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Or the, the, the drug dealer who sees all his friends balling out here and he say, man, I'm broke, man. I need, man, I can't do it. Or the little stripper girl who just can't handle going through this stuff so we're gonna pick up this guy got to do a part two because space is limited on my phone i don't want it to shut off so we're gonna pick up and i'm gonna finish this out in a few minutes thanks for watching tune in for the rest some of y'all watch one part not the other one watch the whole thing and hit that like button subscribe